Hello, hello. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to make the particle audio visualizer effect I made a few weeks ago. We're going to start off by just heading to the video editing tab real quick and dragging in our audio clip. Um, I'm going to set the scene frames to the same number of frames as the audio track is. Keep in mind this will change uh, depending on what frame rate you set. So I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it on 24, however. Then we're just going to head in, delete everything, and add a mesh icosphere. I'm going to scale it down just uh, one tenth for now. And we're going to add a particle system. I'm going to set it to 10,000 frames just for testing. And we want them all to start uh, to appear in the first frame. And our lifetime should be the same as the uh, scene frames. From there, we have to turn off gravity because we don't want that. And we don't want any initial velocity. Uh, we also want to go into viewport display, turn off show emitter, and make the particles a bit smaller just so there is not too many of them in one spot. Now if we press play, we should hear the music, and it should just kind of, well, sit there. That's because we don't have any forces acting on these particles yet. First force we want to add is a harmonic. What this is going to do is just basically pull uh, all the particles to a neutral space. So we're going to set the strength to 100, the dampening to 0.5, and the rest length to 0.2. This is what I found worked for me. However, you can change this to whatever you want. Uh, then if we play it now, you'll see it kind of gets pulled to this spot and stays there. Next, we want to add an actual force. This is what's going to control uh, the size of the sphere. I'm going to turn the noise up to 10, and what we want to do is just keyframe the strength. Then we want to pull up a graph editor and press key, bake sound to F curve, and navigate to our song again, and just bake it. From there, uh, I think it's going to be very weak. So we're going to go to the modifiers, create an envelope at a control point. I found that minus 50 and 50 worked well for me, but again, you can change this depending on the song and what you're doing. And if you play it, you'll see it's actually affected by the music. But it's kind of boring, it's just sphere. So we're going to add one more force, which is going to be turbulence. For the turbulence, I'm going to set the strength to 50, the size to 0.33, and that's about it. That's our finished effect. Oh, but I did actually miss one thing. Uh, if we don't change anything, the noise is going to stay static, which is boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a driver to all the rotation axes of this turbulence. I'm just going to press uh, pound, frame, and then divide it by 48. And I'm going to do that for every axes and now we can see that it's actually spinning as you're playing so that's kind of it well from here we want to go back to our icosphere turn up the number of particles and we're going to uh, bake this animation which is going to probably take a while so I'll see you in a moment when it's done Alrighty, and then once it's baked, we should have our effect. Well, not including color, of course. If we scrub through, you'll see it works pretty well. However, this file is also pretty RAM heavy and performance heavy, especially when we start adding effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to export it as a Alembic. Uh, make sure to set it to selected objects only, and then hit export. Just keep in mind this will take a couple minutes as well. All right, and once that's done, we can just go and create a new Blender scene. Once again, delete everything. We're going to go File, Import, and Import that Alembic we just made. We're going to import both. Uh, and it's also going to import the original Icosphere, which we can just delete. Oh, let me turn uh, this back on real quick. And we look, we have all of our particles here. We want to do then is just create a any object. I'm just going to use a cube. Go to geometry nodes, make a new geometry uh, node system for that cube, and just drag in our icosphere. And we're going to create a uh, mesh to points, I believe it's called. Yep. Geometry to the mesh, points to the geometry, and we want to also set a uh, material like that. We're just going to use the default material. And then just uh, hide our original icosphere and 
make the radius of each point a bit smaller. I'm going to go back to one millimeter again. We should go to the shading tab now. And while we're here, we can set our background to black. Keep in mind the geometry node part, uh, particles, or points, sorry, only work in cycles. So you'll want to switch to that. And only you'll be able to see them in rendered view. So we're going to go get our default material and set it to a emission, like so. I'm going to turn the strength up to, say, 10. From here, we're going to just make a very simple material, which is going to, going to bring in texture coordinates. Uh, from there, go into vector math, object, and set it to length. From there, we're going to uh, bring it into normal math node and divide it. Uh, divide by what you ask. What you'll want to do is go into an orthographic view, uh, get the measure tool and figure out what the radius is of your sphere. For mine, it's around 10 meters. And we're just going to uh, divide it by 10. From there, we're going to go into a color ramp. Bring the value into that. And that to there. And now we have a gradient. From there, we can just change our colors. I already have two that I like. So I'm going to select one there. Nope. I want to change the white one. Grab uh, my other color. Paste it in here. And just bring the purple up. That looks about right. That's basically our entire effect. From here, we just want to place down a camera. I like to make it a little bit more wide angle, so I'm going to use 35 millimeters and just move it back by pressing GZZ twice. Let's go to render view so we can actually see it. Make sure it fits in the frame at all times, so that looks about right. And we want to do one more thing. We're going to render one frame. We don't even need to finish it. I found that noising takes a while, so I'm going to turn it off. And we only really need like 32 samples for a decent frame. We're going to turn on use nodes. From here, we're just going to add a little bit of bloom. Going to make it a few worse so we can actually see what we're doing real quick. Add a glare node. Set it to fog glow. I set the size to 7 and the threshold to 0.8. Very last thing you want to do is you don't want to uh, render it as a PNG sequence, so set it to FFmpeg video, set it to MPEG4, uh, audio, we are going to set AAC, or you can use the other ones, I'm not sure. We need to add our audio backends. So we're going to go back to the video editing tab, and just like before, we're going to drag in our audio clip. And that's about it. I'm going to render the video, and this is what it looks like.